been doing quite a lot of BMS remote witnessing this year for obvious reasons. And I wanted to run through with you the little journey that I've been on for almost six months now from when we started with something as basic as the BMS engineer sharing the BMS screen and then all of us remotely logging in and running through control strategies, like that was easy enough. But then as we started moving into the second BMS session and the third BMS session, where we had to really go out onto site and start doing some BMS interface testing and some electric meter validation checks and how we solved those problems. I soon realized that, you know, because we were pushed into this because of the current situation, but I very quickly realized that this was introducing a lot of value to the other stakeholders that are involved in the the witnessing and the signing off and the acceptance of the building management system. And I've gotten to the point now where I think that even when we get back to normal and it's easy for us to go back to sites and do witnessing, I think that there will always be this element of some remote witnessing because it really is pretty exciting. When I was realizing this, how well it was working, I started to call up my colleagues and talk to them about how they were doing BMS remote witnessing and they were also learning some really interesting things that I hadn't considered yet. So this video sort of wraps up my experience of the last six months of what this can be. Because the bottom line, even if you forget about the need for remote witnessing because of social distancing and other, sites, other types of restrictions, the other thing is it doesn't make sense for between five and 10 people to all go to site and crowd around the BMS engineer all looking over the BMS engineer's shoulder trying to see the screen. It doesn't work very well. Usually when I do witnessing, I'm sitting in the front next to the BMS engineer and we're running through control strategies and asking questions and discussing things and writing down defects and signing things off. But sitting over there in the corner of the room is the client or the facility manager or the independent reviewer or the builder or the MEC contractors and they can't really hear what we're talking about and they can't really see the screen from there. So I think that in 2020, we can do a lot better than what we have been doing for a long time. And it's, it's weird that the same things happen is that we, we don't really evolve until something pushes us into a corner and we have to evolve. But now's the point that we've tested this. It's awesome. And we need to now follow on in the future and continue to do this. With remote witnessing, we're obviously talking about using these online collaboration tools or virtual meeting rooms. And the one that we've been using almost on every single site so far in Australia is Microsoft Teams. I'm pretty sure you could use Zoom or some of the Google applications, but I personally use Microsoft Teams for the online training courses and those sort of things. I thought what I would do is I'll actually switch across and use the actual mic that I would normally use and the webcam for those remote witness sessions or you know meetings. So now you can see me with my Bluetooth headset and my Logitech webcam. So when I'm doing remote BMS witnessing, this is exactly what people will see when I'm talking to them and we're all logged in and we're sharing the BMS server screen and you know going through control strategy testing or whatever it is. So the first thing is that I feel that the BMS engineer needs to actually be on site themselves. So all of us can be remote, but I've just found that it's best if the BMS engineer is at the actual BMS workstation or server and is sharing the screen it's a much reliable and better quality connection. So the BMS engineer should not be remote in their office, remotely logging into the server and then sharing their screen from the office. I think they should be on site. That seems to be work the best. The next thing is it doesn't take much effort to get a decent uh, microphone and headset, a Bluetooth headset. Worst case scenario, you could actually just use your, your, your mobile phone earphones and just plug them into the computer. Um, but do not try and use your laptop's internal microphone and speaker because as sound comes out of the speaker, 
it feeds back into the mic and it's it's pretty much unusable most of the time. So what we did was obviously the BMS engineers sharing the screen. So in this remote meeting, we can all see their screen perfectly. And then what we did was we had two technicians, either BMS guys or mechanical guys with mobile phones out on site with 4G connections, obviously, and they were logged into the virtual meeting as participants. So in the room was, you know, the consultant and the client and the independent reviewer and the builder and all of the contractors. And there were two other people in there and they were the remote technicians that were walking around site. And this was really a game changer in how this went to the next level of remote witnessing. So what we had is we sent the first guy off to the lifts to do the interface testing. And the second guy went off to, for example, the hydraulic contractor. So they're both getting organized. So while we out doing the witnessing at the lifts, and what happened was, you know, that BMS guy had their phone and they would sit there and they'd be standing at the lift. And we could, we could actually, you know, using this, the rear facing camera, we could see into the lift. We could see the lift guy there. And then I'd say, you know, can you put the lift into fault or alarm or, you know, in fire service or exclusive use or whatever it was. And then he'd, he'd listen to me nicely and he'd say, okay, lift engineer, please put the lift into fault. And he'd hold this nice and steadily. And we'd see the lift guy put his key in and turn it and put it to fault. And we'd, you know, we'd, we'd hear this, the sound of bzzz in the lift. And at the same time, we could look at the screen share at the BMS server and see the lift point going to fault. That was like completely perfect. Now, where this got exciting was that usually it would only be me in front of the lift with the BMS guy and the lift guy. It wasn't practical for 10 people to, to walk with me, but now everybody can see what's going on. So the client and their independent reviewer who aren't even on site, they are seeing exactly, we're all seeing exactly the same thing. And that was really exciting. Now, while we had two remote techs is that it takes too long for someone to walk from point A to point B. That, that could take 10 minutes to get a lift to go up somewhere or there's doors locked somewhere or they're painting floors somewhere, whatever it is. So as soon as that was done, we switched straight across to tech number two, who was with the hydraulics contractor. So when we went to the hydraulics interface testing, tech number one, who was with the lift person, he went off to somewhere else. He'd go and meet the electrician or the fire contractor, who the next person was, get them organized, get set up, make sure you've got good signal, those sorts of things. So like immediately, we would switch from the lifts to the hydraulics. And again, um, tech number two at the hydraulics panel, he's sitting there talking to him. I said to him, look, please, could you put the hydraulic sump pump panel into fault? And he'd say to the hydraulics guy, please put the panel into fault. So we'd actually see the hydraulics guy open up the control panel. We'd see him go in there and override a relay or bridge a terminal or, or turn the isolator power off. We'd see that happening, everybody. 10 people would see that perfectly through this phone and we could hear the technician talking to us very clearly and he could hear us very clearly. Everybody could hear everybody very clearly. So as soon as we hear the, the sound again on the hydraulic panel, we look at the BMS screen share and there we can see the red fault point, like perfect end to end testing. Then when that's finished, we switch back to tech A, who's now walked off across to the meet electrician and we're at the mechanical services switchboards, for example, and, you know, got the phone out, we open the panel up, there's the electric meter, he holds it nice and steadily. And we can see the kilowatt hours on the electric meter and we can see the kilowatt hours on the BMS graphic screen share. Perfect. Usually it's me with my head in the panel and I'm looking at the LCD display on the electric meter only I can see that and everyone's standing behind me and I'm reading out the kilowatt hours, everyone's writing them down. In this case, everybody can see exactly what I could see when I was going to be doing it. All right, let's switch back to camera and proper sound. Right, we're back. Um, hopefully we're back. I'll know in a second or two. Um, now you can come across a few roadblocks. Uh, if you're doing generator interface testing and it's in the basement and there's no 4G signal down there from the mobile phones, that's a problem. 
that didn't actually happen. Luckily, we didn't have that situation, but it, it definitely will happen. So I think what you could do there is, if you just had a 50 meter little drum about this big with patch lead on it, or you know the, the structured cabling, Cat 6A, with two RJ45 male crimps on them, and a little uh, Wi-Fi router or an access point, it would be pretty easy for you just to go to the plant room around the corner and then plug your little, your little drum of cable into the switch and then just roll that drum all the way down the passage and put the access point on the floor. That would probably work pretty easily. And I reckon if you've got that all set up, ready to go in a little box, it would take you 10 minutes to plug into the switch, roll the cable down to the passage and get yourself some Wi-Fi signal. Actually, just thinking that through, you'd need a power supply as well for the access point. So you need a power supply in the passage down there or that room, or maybe you could buy a power over ethernet little network switch with a power over ethernet little access point and make something up. Either way, what I'm talking about here is think ahead of the problem that's gonna catch you out and sort the problem out. If you can sort it out, you just gotta think about it ahead of time. Now, obviously this, this whole thing does take a bit more planning. So I think what you'd need is you'd need your BMS engineer on the server, Bluetooth headset, focusing on a screen share and managing that component. You've got the two techs out there with mobile phones. Now they don't have to be BMS guys and they weren't actually BMS guys the last time I did this. They were like mechanical air balancing guys or as a builder, one of the services managers, just as part of the, the team, you just need two guys out there. Um, I think you still need the BMS project manager to also be there logged in just to organize the whole thing. I found it quite difficult for the BMS engineer to deal with the screen sharing and at the same time coordinate with the two remote techs. You go there, you go there, are you ready to go, you know, flip between, you know, sh sharing the screen and showing their face, with their mask on. It's a bit too much for one BMS person to coordinate. So I think you need to have a project manager there, a BMS person ideally, who's sort of running the show coordinating with the two remote techs. Okay, you need to be there, to be, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, no, I'm ready, in the background. But, you know, if you just think about the value that this provides, it's, it's incredible. Let me tell you about something else that uh, my colleague told me. So I was discussing this with them and they said that they were doing some BMS remote witnessing on a data center here in Melbourne and the client was in Sydney. So they'd arranged the remote session, not because of restrictions, but more around, it just the client wasn't there. And the client actually employed or engaged a videographer. So the person that came to site, they came with a mobile phone in a gimbal, so it was steady, and they had a mobile phone on a tripod with battery packs and things. This is like, this is pretty cool. So when you walked into that generator room, the first videographer would plant the tripod down with the phone across the whole room, so you could see the whole room the generators, main switchboards, all the people standing there. And then the other videographer, he had the, um, the mobile phone with the battery pack on a gimbal. The gimbal's a thing that it doesn't shake. So he'd walk around and so you'd, you'd have almost like, you know, video quality type, you know, movie quality stuff here. So that's really exciting. And I was even thinking, you know, there's even an opportunity for a business there where you just go out to, you know, builders and help them with making remote witnessing work. But I think you know, if you're a builder and you've got loads of witnessing to do, not just BMS, you've got hydraulics, fire security, access, you know, you've got all the witnessing to do, it'd be worth your while to go and buy two mobile phones with SIM cards, a little tripod, a gimbal, maybe possibly not required, a bit overkill, and then you know, two or three Bluetooth headsets you know, with these mobile phones, install the Microsoft Teams app so you're not reliant on the um, you know, the technician and his phone, which is, that can work, and it did work for us. But I think as we evolve and improve how we do remote witnessing, that's pretty awesome. I think we should get good at that. I'm looking forward to that. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are thinking, Bryce, that does sound pretty exciting, but it just isn't worth the effort to make it work. But like, it's 2020, like we can do better at using technology. Like forget about technology, like high level interfaces, package control systems. There's, you know, we're, we sort of, we think about that all the time, integration and stuff, but there's another piece to play here. Um, and I think that when the client logs in remotely, um, and this is, works 
and it's working really well. There's the remote text, the screen share, and you know, there's, there's a team approach. That's very impressive. Like you're out witnessing, you've been like working yourself to death for 12 months, trying to achieve impossible deadlines. And now you are presenting your company and your building management system to the client. And this is a great opportunity to show your value and your awesomeness because straight away, everybody is gonna be impressed with that and more forgiving some of the other issues that you might have. Now, before I go, I forgot to say something. The other advantage with this remote witnessing is that you don't need to be remote. So what could happen is um, the BMS engineers on site sharing a screen. Now, you could be somebody, the mechanical contractor, the builder, or anybody, and you've got your headset in, and you've got your phone logged in. You're a participant in the remote meeting, but you might be on site. You might be sitting in the next room, or in the lunchroom, or in your site office. So that also introduces a whole lot of things, because one, uh, one of my clients had said to me for this data center job, he was the, the client's independent reviewer, and he was on site. So he actually was on site but he had his headset in and he was remotely logged in. He was sitting in the room next door, just listening. And as they walked into the room and the tripod and the view of the whole room and, and the, the steady gimbal, he was just sitting in another room actually on site because that way it was more comfortable. It's a more controlled environment. He could properly hear and see what was going on. He just sat there. And if he saw something or heard something he wasn't sure about, he'd get up with his phone and walk around into the room and say, hey guys, sorry, hold on a sec. We just do that again. Let's have a look at that. So remote witnessing and this idea of people remotely logging in and having awesome audio and visual you know, of what's going on, it's not just for those people that are sitting in their office down the road in another state or in another country. It's also very useful even for the people that are on site to have a better picture of what's going on and can hear everything that's going on. So have a think about that. It takes some effort. I think that every single BMS engineer should have a decent Bluetooth headset. Like, it's the way it's going. Even just for remote meetings, if you're a BMS engineer and you've got a problem, you want to phone your software program in the office, do a virtual meeting. They can share their screen and show you something. You know, we should get better at doing that. All right, guys, have a think about that. Make it work. And I will see you next week. I have done quite a lot of BMS remote witnessing this year. You know, as we went cut, <clears throat> you need to think about what you're going to say, boss. I have been doing quite a lot of BMS remote witnessing this year, where we, we originally started off with something quite... Fuck. I have done quite a lot of BMS witnessing it just does not make sense. Cut.